We often divide history into era of technology. The Stone Age, the Bronze Age, the Age of Discovery, the Industrial Age, the Space Age. Most recently, we've hit the pinnacle of our technological advancement, the Information Age and the Age of the Internet. What is the potential of technology? What can we accomplish with it? What can we accomplish? Is there even a limit? Is there any problem that we couldn't solve? Any issue we couldn't surmount if we were able to implement and execute the right technological strategy? Some would argue that there's nothing we couldn't do. Internet.org is an organization created and founded by Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook fame with the goal of bringing the Internet to parts of the world that aren't currently connected to it. Zuckerberg asserts that connectivity to the internet is a human right and would say that It's one of the biggest problems in, in, of my generation to, to get everyone in the world um, to have internet access. So I guess the UN needs to update their list. Maybe they can take off water or peace to make room. Now that's not to say that the internet can never be helpful in a social or societal context. Carl Shirky gives a great example in his TED talk on cognitive surplus of a blog in Kenya that began to compile data on ethnic violence, which sparked the development of the website Yushihiti, which used a program to take reports of violence and grouped them on a map. Now, everybody had access to information on where the violence was occurring. Technology compiled information and sparked progress. However, recently it seems to have become a trend to emphasize the digital and technological contributions to events and to focus all the conversations on these contributions. Yeah, it's kind of, it, it just, it's like the same old, uh, I'm going to mix metaphors here, but it's like the same old uh, wine in the, in the uh, you know, in the iPad casing. Take Egypt as an example when the, the movement was happening. Yes, Facebook and Twitter were used to a degree, but nobody talked in the American media about the massive role that labor unions played, particularly in Alexandria, which is a key port city in Egypt. It's not really solving every, any problems. In other words, going so far as to claim that lack of internet connectivity is one of the most important issues of our generation, and that technology can solve every problem is a bit of a stretch. Evgeny Morozov, the Belarusian writer and researcher who authored the book To Save Everything, Click Here, refers to this ideology as solutionism. Morozov is critical of those who design technology to solve problems that he claims cannot be solved through technology alone. Part of my argument is that Silicon Valley is now empowered to solve problems that may not actually exist. We tend to view any initiative that involves technology and information as being beneficial because somehow there is this bias in society that uh, as long as you have more information, things are automatically better because you have more knowledge. So many of the schemes which would look outright cookie to us, you know, 10 or 15 years ago or 20 years ago, suddenly look normal because we are prepared for the next rapture. Now, if you think I'm being a little harsh in my criticisms and accusations of disillusionment at Silicon Valley, let me introduce you to an article written by George Packer. George Packer is a staff writer for The New Yorker, and in May of this year he published a 10,000 word piece on Silicon Valley titled, Change the World. For his reflective piece, Packer interviewed many different tech employees, entrepreneurs, venture capitalists, and more. And in one way or another, Patrick asked each person he interviewed this question. Why, during the decades of the personal computer and the internet, has the American economy grown so slowly? Why have average ways stagnated? Why have the middle class been hollowed out? And why has inequality surged? Here are their answers. One young techie wondered if this was really true. Another so that the problem was a shortage of trained software engineers. A third noted that the focus of the tech industry was shifting from engineering to design and suggested that this would open up new job opportunities. 
Sam Lesson, who leads the Facebook group in charge of the social network's timeline feature, suggested that the traditional methods of measuring capital and GDP might not be useful, saying, some people will choose to build social capital rather than financial capital. Given the opportunity to spend an extra hour or an extra dollar, they will choose to spend more time with their friends. These are the people that we are listening to. These are the people we're putting on pedestals, who are trusting when we hear them say that technology will solve all of our problems. In Packer's words, it suddenly occurred to me that the hottest tech startups are solving all the problems of being 20 years old with cash on hand because that's who thinks them up. We're being told by these tech entrepreneurs that technology can save the world. But what if that's not the case? What if technology can't solve all our problems? What does that mean? What does that mean that we have to do? I don't have an answer. Maybe you do.